Have you wondered where to get good, royalty-free images on the internet? We're going to talk about how to protect yourself against a $10,000 mistake that one of my clients did that is very common when you're looking for images. We've got to protect you. So let's talk about images. Man, they're fun. We can put them in blogs. We can put them on our website. We can use them in social. It's great. And all we have to do is go to Google. So I have Google pulled up and I'm going to type in, okay, I have a problem with rose gold. So if anyone wants to send me anything, my birthday's coming up. <laughs> I love rose gold. Now I want to have a picture that I'm going to share on social about rose gold. So you'll see here that I have lots of pictures. Woohoo! Now I'm going to go over to images. Number two way people search on Google. Now, when you go and search for rose gold, I'm already in love. I've got all my favorite happy places right here. However, if I'm going to use, like, let's say I'm going to click on an image that is a rose gold watch. Now, what our brain says, well, if it's on Google Images, I can use it, right? No, <laughs> you could not use this. Let me show you how. Now, there's a bunch of misunderstandings around what is royalty free and what is not royalty free. And unfortunately, I've had a couple clients who have gotten in trouble by using images that are not theirs and they thought it was just fine. So there's a whole big issue right now with Getty images. I'm sure you guys have heard of Getty. They've been around forever. They own most of the stock photography sites on the internet right now. Now, Getty's business model has changed to we will troll the internet. We will look for all of our pictures that people have taken from Google Images, and then we will send you a notice of a fine, a bill. And that bill is then goes to lawyers and attorneys and the rest is, you know, you guys know what happens at that point. And I've had a number of clients get smacked around this. So this is why I want to talk about getting good royalty for images that are not going to be a $10,000 mistake. So here I got, I got this rose gold watch. It's by Samsung. Now I can go in there, I can right mouse click on this and take it right now and save it to my computer. That seems perfectly fine. Well, it's not. You don't own that image. There's a photographer and a company who owns that image. It just happens to show up under rose gold. Now, there's another misconception that when you come here, you'll see I'm at the top of Google under rose gold. Now, what we have to remember is that under tools, there is a thing under here that says usage rights. It's right here at the top. Now people come down here and it says labeled for reuse with modification, labeled for reuse, labeled for non-commercial reuse with modification, and labeled for non-commercial reuse. Now here's the problem with these is that how do we know that those images are tagged correctly? We don't know. Those images come from all over the internet. We don't know how they're tagged, who tagged them, and where they're from. So my advice to you is never take any images off of Google Images. It is risky and you don't know if those have been tagged correctly. And once you get a little love note from Getty or Samsung, it's too late. So let's talk about how can we really find excellent stock photography. You're gonna probably have to pay. I'm gonna show you some free sites that are gonna give you these royalty-free images where you're not gonna get in trouble. One of my first favorite ones is Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. Now Pixabay has collaborated with Shutterstock. Shutterstock is you have an account on Shutterstock and you can go and buy images there for um, licensing. Pixabay, actually, I'm going to go in and type in rose gold. Now I'm going to pick. So this first set of images right here are from Shutterstock. But all the ones underneath it, ooh, I like that one. This funky little desk thing is cool. Now this has been vetted for free download and free use. So I have this really hip, trendy uh, desk. It's got you know, the glasses and the coffee mug and the whole nine yards. I like this. I want to use this in my social. Great. You can do that because this has been vetted by Pixabay. So you can come down here. I can download this right to my computer. Off I go. So that's one way, Pixabay. Another one is Unsplash, U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H.com, Unsplash. Unsplash is another great place to find royalty-free photography that you can use. So I'm going to come back in here. Now, what's interesting about this is this is a community of photographers that have said, look, we want our images seen. If we're going to take all these images, just give me attribution and you can use my images as much as you like. So I'm going to go in here and type my beloved rose gold again. Okay. 
Now I get a whole bunch of really cool pictures. So I see a picture that has a bunch of succulents in these rose gold containers. I'm gonna grab this, download it for free. If I use this in my social now, it's and I can see it right in the naming convention of the image, it says Car Cara Eads, and then it has a number and it has an unsplash.jpg. So I'm giving credit to the photographer without getting in trouble. She has said it's okay for me to use her images as long as I give her attribution. Yay, that's wonderful, I love this. You can also hire Unsplash to take custom photos for you too. So you can hire one of the photographers, say I'm doing a video shoot for this, I need images of this, and they'll go and take them for you for a price. So that's, I think that's kind of a cool feature. Now we're gonna take a look at one of my very favorite tools on the planet is Canva. Now maybe some of you have heard of it, it's Canvas without the S, so C-A-N-V-A. Canva is a godsend. I spent years as a graphic artist, I was a graphic artist for many years, in Photoshop. And that sucks you in like no one's business. You can get in there and you start mixing with the pixels and the filters and you're going nuts and two hours later, you still don't have an image. So stay out of Photoshop and go to Canva. Canva is a genius tool. It makes, it makes creating images so easy. Now, the cool thing about Canva is that you can go into Canva and you can create custom images on the fly. It's super easy. So let me pull up Canva. Now, another great part of Canva is that all the presets, so you think about banners on Facebook, banners on Twitter, images for Twitter, images for Instagram. This has all the presets already defined. So if I wanna come in here and I wanna do a, um, a YouTube thumbnail, I can come in here, I click the YouTube thumbnail, it's already been measured, it's perfect for an, a direct upload to my YouTube channel. So I can come in here. Now I'm gonna upload that royalty-free image that I just showed you with my succulents. I'm gonna grab that. The nice thing too is, you'll see here in, on my Canva feed that I have all of my photo shoot images. And I can just drop a photo shoot image in there, add text on it, off it goes to social. It's wonderful. And let's talk a little bit about photos too. It's great to use Unsplash and, and some of these Pixabay sites, and, but, but be careful because everyone has access to these same images. Have you guys seen the same blonde gal? She's got her hair pulled back and she has that, 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 that headset on. That lady must be on a million websites. So just remember that you want to create your own images. You know, here's the deal. Wedding videographers and wedding photographers are usually unemployed Monday through Thursday. So if you want a killer photo shoot, invite, go onto Craigslist, look for people that are photographers in the area, or Thumbtack is another great tool. Thumbtack is an app you put on your phone and it gives me access to makeup artists, photographers, wedding consultants, you name it. Hire a photographer for a half day, it's gonna cost you like maybe 200 bucks. Have them come to an event that you're having or come to your company and take good photos. Using photos that you created, whether they be on your smartphone or they be through a photographer, is always gonna be the best way to go. That's you, those are your pictures. When you stock photography, you lose a level of personalization. It's like you remove your, one level, you remove yourself from that personalized engagement. So whenever you're gonna use something like a stock photography, just remember that people know it's stock photography and it can be slightly discrediting if that's all you use because you're not really showing who you are you're just using other people's photos. Okay, so let's go back to Canva. So I've got my royalty-free image now, my succulents with my rose gold pots. I'm gonna grab them, I'm gonna move them up a little bit. Now the cool thing about Canva is that you can come in, you go to text, they have all these presets for text. So I can click on any of these presets, I can change out the text. So I'm gonna put succulent love, love, now I can go in and I'm done. I mean, I literally have created a social media image. I can put it wherever I want. I can take this part out. It's super easy. And you are in and out of here in five to 10 minutes. And now you have a fantastic banner. You download it, upload it to your social media. You're good to go. Now you've created an image now that is royalty free. It's not gonna get you in trouble. And you have a beautiful graphic and Canva lets you, you don't have to think about being a graphic artist. It has all of the cheats in there for you. Now Canva makes its money off of selling clip art and stock photography at a buck a pop. 
So if you need something, you can buy it for a dollar and then you know you're covered as well. So that's awesome. So when you're thinking about royalty-free stock photography, take it yourself. Smartphones have amazing cameras. Take your own photos. It's fine. I spoke for the American Broadcasters Association. I attended a seminar that was about viral video and virality. And a big part of virality is that it's in the moment. It's spontaneous. You capture a moment that is special. And if you capture it just right, then it has this viral quality to it, which is great. So, but when you take pictures with your smartphone, people know that you're kind of like giving them a backstage pass to what your life is. And if you have a backstage pass, it just has more credibility. It is more about you and less about a stock image. So make sure to balance your use of royalty-free images with your own images and then upload them to Canva and then add your text on top of that. So important that you be thinking strategic around what does my feed look like in Instagram? What does my, my, my feed look like in Facebook? Now, Facebook is mostly people's photos that they take from their smartphone. But as you evolve as a business owner, you'll have a business page on Facebook, you'll have a brand business account on Instagram, and you'll have a branded account on YouTube. Now, in order to create consistency of brand across all those different platforms, you need a tool like Canva so that you stay, you have all your logos are correct, your colors are correct, your images are correct, and you know that wherever they see you, whether it be LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube thumbnails, or in Facebook or Instagram, it has a beautiful consistency so that I get your brand and I see it applied correctly across all of your social media. So important. So hopefully you've learned a little bit about royalty free. Make sure to post a comment down if you have some other great tools that you have found that make creating images uh, at, um, you know, legally and uh, have a real eye-catching pop. Uh, put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback on that. Make sure to subscribe to this video and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you get notified of my latest and greatest images. So go to Canva, create some awesome images, and I can't wait to see them on social media.